it should be said from the outset that this is not a book of science. If it were, it would not discuss history, music, art or philosophy, as those are topics squarely in the realm of the humanities. This is also not a book about the humanities because if it were, it would not delve into the subjects of psychology, physics, physiology, genetics, mathematics or cosmology, being fields of science. And this is certainly not a book about religion, spirituality or metaphysics, as these are strictly matters of faith. But this is a book about how everything can be better understood and explained through the framework of harmonic science, as it once existed in the Pythagorean philosophy of Musica Universalis. Two and one half years ago I decided to return to a research project in music perception that I had postponed 30 years earlier. It seems time had not diminished my curiosity about how we are able to organically measure the degree of dissonance and mentally anticipate the direction of resolution in music harmony. My original work in this area had taken me deep into mathematics and computer simulations in search of an explanation. Now, armed with the scientific method, powerful computer tools and access to the world's latest research, I was sure that I could determine once and for all whether our perception of music was something organic or nothing more than cultural conditioning. I had no idea that what I was about to learn would shake the very foundation of my 21st century worldview. Triggered by a quiet moment of insight as a young musician, my investigations led me down a path of knowledge that has been known but well guarded for thousands of years. What I found was a long forgotten yet scientifically supported explanation for how we perceive music geometrically and how nature itself is structured as a kind of quantum music. Through the principles of harmonic natural science I also found an integrated worldview, a comprehensive system of thought and uplifting philosophy that offered a warm alternative to the chilling scientism currently in vogue. Following this path to its inevitable conclusion was a liberating experience for me, as I know it will be for you. Yet this is not a leisurely read. The subject covers a broad range of information and is so interdisciplinary that it can be a challenge regardless of your background. The simultaneous use of musical, mathematical and scientific terminology can be somewhat difficult to grasp at times. Even though the universal principles of nature are quite simple and elegant, while essential ideas and terms are defined along the way, someone with a little musical training and some high school math and science will probably fare more easily. Beyond unfamiliar terminology, the diagrams also require an investment of time to review and even more time to ponder. They juxtapose diverse concepts in harmonic philosophy, from the mythology of acoustics to the geometry of life and color mapping of the planets. As a result, some will not have the time to invest or see it as either too technical or conceptually abstract. When this happens, I urge you to forge ahead to the next topic or illustration that catches your eye. There are many different opportunities to understand the essential message. If you have a specific category of interest, you may want to enter the book non-linearly and circle back for background. To facilitate this, the work is divided into five sections, social thesis, psychoacoustical theory, psychophysiological principles, harmonic models and physical archetypes. But while each section focuses on a particular area of interest, they do build on preceding definitions and concepts. For this reason a glossary of terms and other definitions are provided in the appendix for reference. Anyone curious about the real history of harmonic theory and how its diabolus and musica came to shape Western civilization should continue reading straight through, learning the true, unedited story behind the development of music was my entry into the study of harmonics, leading naturally into the deeper subjects that follow. But if your preference is to find out what harmonic science has to say about the very puzzling question of music perception, then you might 
want to skip to the second and third sections where a revolutionary new harmonic interference theory integrates the fields of acoustics, psychology, physiology, and music to explain exactly how we recognize and respond to coherent sound. If the subject of perception is not your first interest, then perhaps the organic visualization of music in the fourth section will be a more pragmatic entry point. Organic harmonic models brought to life using computer simulations are destined to revolutionize how we notate, compose and analyze music. In the fifth section, these same harmonic models are then used as physical archetypes to help describe all levels of nature. From the cosmos to the smallest quantum realm and all living creatures in between, as different instances of the same crystallized musical structure. My approach here, which is essentially a modern rendition of the Pythagorean path to knowledge, has been to integrate the latest research from diverse fields into a wholly consistent system founded on the physics of harmonics. To aid comprehension, the more technical aspects of the system track along in the footnotes and are compiled in the appendices. Copious editorial is added along the way to help illuminate the relevance of harmonic principles to other topics of interest in natural philosophy, such as science history, social theory and the impact on personal belief systems, both religious and scientific. Some of these comments may inadvertently offend some readers and for that I sincerely apologize in advance. It is simply not possible to fully discuss harmonic science without including those particular topics needed to explain why we see nothing of this ancient knowledge system today. With all of the warnings and disclaimers out of the way, I would urge anyone to consider the relevance of harmonic science and its attendant natural philosophy to your life. You have a birthright to know about this whether you ultimately accept it or not. You owe it to yourself to consider a different interpretation of nature, society and self than the one presently offered by the schools, churches and popular media. By the end of this book you will never see the world the same way again.